No, it's not a bad thing. It's not. I think it's kind of cute, actually. There you go. Ha ha ha! She's blushing now, boys. I mean, thank you. It's not like it's... I mean, I don't really know how to respond to that. You know, I'm just not something that people say, you know, and... <laughs> She's just completely... Yes! Falcon 69, you're in, dog! What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the England Exchange. I'm your host, the Birdman, who happens to be overseas these days, known as Falcon. Um, this will be the last video I'm recording for right now. Now, don't get too upset in case you're enjoying it and want to see some more. Chances are I probably continue it, but right now I've recorded the last episode and this one right now, back to back. So I'm going to air these videos out and see if you guys enjoy them enough to do an entire run. So again, right now I'm just kind of like step so uh, tippy toeing around it, I suppose, just because I'm not really sure. Visual novel is not something I've covered in the past, so I'm not really sure how it's going to do. But again, if there's enough support, we'll do the entire thing, no questions asked. Uh, thus far, I'm really enjoying it, so I hope you guys are as well. So just be very vocal. The one thing I didn't ask last time around, which I should have, was who would you guys like me to, you know, pursue as a love interest for our dude over here? We have a lot of people to choose from right now. Uh, we have males, we got females, doesn't really matter which one. In the comments down below, let me know who you're kind of interested in, who seems the more... Pro who seems the ideal person for me? I've kind of already made it clear that I kind of have a thing for girls like Peggy, but I'm curious about what your opinion is on the matter, so let me know down below who you think I should kind of pursue after. That being said, it was quite enough to hear the birds outside my window, the wind howling through the cracks in the wood. Quite enough to hear footsteps in the hallway, rapid, heavy footsteps, like someone was on a mission. And that's the mission right there, the pounding on my door. A relentless pounding beat at my door, and in the time it took me to stand up from my desk and cross the room, it grew several decibels louder. Oh gee, big surprise, it's Peggy indeed. How you doing, baby? <laughs> you know, I was just telling the people about you kind of being the one, but I'll leave it up to them to decide. I pulled open the door to find Peggy on the other end, eyes electric. Falcon 69! Yeah, I know. Usually, I make girls' eyes go very electric when they say Falcon 69. <laughs> uh, not really. Ever. I need your help. Sign my petition, please. Uh, what? See, our uni is far, far behind the times as far as the green movement goes. You'd think that a place of intellectualism and education would be concerned about the future of the world. The future of its very patrons, but no. No, it is left to those of us with common sense, desire, and passion to find a way to get out our world out of this ridiculous predicament it's in. Our way of life is totally unsustainable. There's no way we'll be living like we do now in 30 years. Right now, we are pumping out cheap clothes just to throw them away in a year. We are stripping the soil of nutrients to grow food that we mostly waste. If we go on like this, nothing will grow, and the sea will rise the sea rise will drown the coastlines, and we don't have to eat nothing but insects. And you can't bet your bollocks will be sorry that nobody invested in clean energy, and we ended up running out of fossil fuels. <laughs> oh, Peggy, you're such a trip. I love, I love her enthusiasm at the very least. She started speaking faster and faster, and I simply tuned her out, instead of watching the dynamic expression on her face. She didn't seem to have any idea what she looked like when she spoke, her eyes getting wider and smaller, her mouth flying this way and that, the occasional chunk of spit flying from her mouth. Very sexy. Finally, instead of gesturing dramatically at the wall, she began to make eye contact with me again, and I tuned back in. Even the smallest of actions, if made a, con con a concerted effort by multiple individuals on a daily basis, should be able to help. It's easy to say it won't make a bloody dent, but it's a load of rubbish. If everyone who said something like that did what they were complaining about, even if they just got off of their at arses, not asses, but arses, we're British here, and voted for change, the world would end up in a much better place. So, will you sign my petition? Uh, I got a bit lost in the middle there. W what's the petition for? I want the university to commit to using more renew renewable energy sources. London completely ignores solar power because of cramped roof spaces and poor weather, but we have a big buildings that we can make it work. Ah, all that information for just a solar panel petition. Please, please, please sign it. I know you're the kind of person who believes in change of the future. Nobody else has signed it, so... She looked so sad saying it that I couldn't help but take pity on her. Sure, I'll sign. Yes, get in! The way she was dancing around and punching the air, you'd think she had entered a gladiatorial arena and managed to make it out alive. Do you think you might... do me another favor? Well... Sure, I mean, you seem to be blushing about this favor too, so what do you got in mind, Peggy? That depends a bit on the favor. Falcon, don't you ruin this for us! 
Would you help me get signatures from everyone here? For some reason, I can't seem to sit anyone down long enough to talk to them. Oh, that type of favor. Oh, I knew the reason. I didn't want to bother anybody with this kind of thing. They definitely wouldn't like it. But it would make Peggy happy if I did. Well... I want to get some favor points with Peggy in. I'm still not sure who we're going to go after just yet, but let's help Peggy out a little bit here. Just to have her as an option for us. Falcon69, you are tops. You are the very per you are the very best person I have ever met in my life. Ever! Take this. She miraculously materialized an additional clipboard and pencil from God only knows where and handed them to me. If you can just get Angelo and Mark, everything will be fine. I can handle the rest. You're too nice to say no. Oh, they're too nice to say no. She gave me a light tap on the head, which required her to stand on her tiptoes and sauntered off towards Danny's room. Oh, it's kind of cute. So, it was up to me. I, luckily, I, I like Mark, so I should be able to talk Mark into this one, right? I found Mark first. I was surprised that Peggy didn't want to talk to him herself, but at the same time, it made sense. He was a nice guy, but it was probably easy for him to come off as a creepy... As creepy, especially towards women. <laughs> really? Fobby was creepy? No, get out of here. In any case, it took only a few minutes of explaining the purpose of the petition for Mark to point out every flaw in Peggy's plan, from funding to the disruption that construction would cause to the fact that the university already had carbon neutral goal statement. Regardless, I admire her spunk. I'll sign. Hey, you see? It's, it's the way you present stuff, you know? She's a go-getter, that Peggy. With one signature down, I moved on to Angelo, who I found sprawled across the couch in the living room, a magazine on his face. Angelo? What? What has happened? Oh, it's just you. That was an intense reaction. Yeah, well, what did you want? I began to explain the purpose of the petition, but Angelo raised his hands as if physically pushing me out of his head. Nope. Nope. I'm not gonna fall for any of that tree-hugger bullshit. You can find someone else to bother with that, eh? As he turned on his heel and left the room. Well, one of two wasn't bad, right? <laughs> well, that explains why Angelo and Peggy are always at each other's throats, right? I caught up with Peggy later to deliver my results. So, uh, how many signatures did you need anyway? I was going for 5,000. 5,000? But I'm not sure how possible that is anymore, so... No, I won't give up, I can't. The future of this beautiful Earth, the future of all of our lives depend on this. Thank you so much again for your help, Falcon69. I'm glad you're willing to actually look at what's wrong with the world, instead of ignoring it like most everybody else. She grabbed my hands and shook them warmly. I felt the blush coming on and pulled them awkwardly away. Stop being a beta, Falcon69! Hey, it was the least I could do. Good on you, Peggy. Best of luck. No luck needed. I've got drive, will, and a vision. What else do I need? As she disappeared down the hall, I began to wonder. What else really did she need? That a girl could power three jet planes on will alone. It's true. The university library was a little less friendly than the ones that actually see in America. Back home, even high school students could visit a campus library to take notes and check references, although they need a special permission to check anything out. I had done papers for history class that way. Here, the whole library was behind a security gate that needed a university ID card to get through. I had vaguely heard about a scandal where a guy stole rare old books from a British library to sell at an online auction. Maybe that was why they were so tight in security. Yeah, that would probably be it, Falcon. Hmm, didn't Mark say he hung out here a lot? Maybe I should try to find him. Well, he said philosophy last time around, right? So I'm gonna say philosophy. There he is. I looked around the philosophy section and spotted Mark sitting at a table. He had a wide array of books spread in front of him, so for a moment I wondered if I should bother him. Then he looked up, saw me, and waved me over. Falcon 69, it is good to see you. So, you study philosophy? All study is philosophy. The word means love of wisdom. Alright, Mark, you're getting a little bit too deep for me now, dog. But isn't philosophy one of those abstract concepts that you said wasn't important? The belief that abstract concepts are less important than living concerns in itself is a philosophy. From there, the conversation got a bit convoluted. Still, Mark was never angry when I disagreed with him or had to ask him to explain a term he was using. He was an interesting person to talk to. Weird, but interesting. Okay. Oh, look who it is. King Douchebag himself. Valgan69, looks like you're serving table 5. Brandon pointed to the largest table in the bar, filled with 10 loud and clearly obnoxious teenagers. Have fun. I glared at him and he laughed. What did I ever do to him? Him getting in trouble was his own damn fault. You damn right it was. You know what? You stick to your... You stick to your laurels here, Falcon. It was all him. 
Oh, that was it? <laughs> We're just flying through these days sometimes, huh? As I entered the hostile common room, I spotted Ji Hyo inside. Oh, the, the Korean artist. Um, is it alright if I watch TV? What? I'm sorry to disturb you. I'm not disturbed. No, not disturbed. <laughs> Why you gotta sound so paranoid about it, Ji Hyo? So, do you mind if I turn the TV on then? It's fine. I took a seat not too close and turned on the set, though I kept the sound low. I snuck a peek or two at Jiho just to be sure I wasn't bothering her, but her attention seemed completely focused on the paper in front of her. She must be good at tuning out the rest of the world. I leaned back and yawned and caught Jiho staring right at me. What? What? Did I do something strange? No, I sometimes stare into space when I'm thinking. Oh, I've done that. I didn't mean to make her feel awkward. So, um, what are you working on? A study. Something you're studying for class? No, a study. A preparation, planning for a painting. Oh, I see. Well, what are you gonna paint? I don't know. She stood up. Why do her eyes do that? She, like, the ideas just come out to me, you know? You dig? And why does she start talking like that suddenly as well? Uh, right. You can't control where the inspiration goes, yo. <laughs> What's the deal with this girl? Does she have like multiple personalities suddenly or what? I feel like she's taking digs at me because I'm from America. She picked up her sketch pen and left the room. I hope I hadn't upset her, but I found her a bit hard to understand. Hey, It's not Maya, it's Asi. I called her Maya last episode. Well, whatever, I was in the ballpark. I knew it was like four letters. Work is horrible, isn't it? I lifted my hand. Asi was next to me, a weary smile on her face. Yeah, that's probably why it's called work. Not much we can do about it. Heh, <laughs> ain't that the truth. I didn't feel much like talking and thought my reply would ward her off, but instead she giggled. You must be quite disciplined with an attitude like that. I should learn from you, but I'm too impatient. Ah, uh, you and me both, Massey. I nodded, unsure of what to say in response. Or Massey, why do I keep adding an M in there? Now I'm combining Aussie and mine together. Aussie, Aussie. Ass. <laughs> I call you ass from now on. Turn around, maybe, then I'll get a better picture of it. How was your work day? Brandon giving you a hard time? I glanced her at her in surprise. Had Ashley told her? I tried to keep in quiet since I didn't want to start trouble in the hostel. There were enough of us that little bit of friction could set a fire ablaze. Oh, I know Brandon pretty well. Plus, it doesn't make a brain surgeon to put two and two together. As soon as I saw the looks he was giving you, I knew you were on his list. Is this a common thing? I wouldn't say common. It's not easy to make Brandon feel insecure, but somehow you've managed to do that. Wait, insecure? I thought he was mad because I almost cost him his job. No, he almost cost him his job. He knows that he knows that just as much as you do. But it bothers him to see how easily people here have taken to you. You're not best friends with everyone, but they're comfortable around you. It's not the case for him, abrasive as he can be. Oh, I, I didn't even think about it that way. He's not a bad guy, he's just kind of a twat. <laughs> Don't let him get to you. And if you ever want to talk about it, you can always vent to me. My lips are sealed. Maybe not for long, huh? Ha <laughs> uh, You know what I'm... Okay. Well, thank you, Aussie. To be honest, I was, uh... It was weighing on me. I didn't want to tell anyone, but dealing with it every day in silence was getting rough. I figured, everyone needs someone that they can talk to. Someone they can rely on, you know? I hope I can be that person for you. Well... Thank you. If you ever need to talk, I'm here for you, too. Thanks, Falcon69. Honestly, you're so sweet. It's no wonder everyone likes you. It's hard to find guys who are genuinely nice without wanting anything from you, if you know what I mean. Well, I thought the, the, the recurring thing here was that nice guys finish last. Is not the case anymore or what? I'm glad you came into this hostel. I needed some to meet someone like you. I'm telling you right now, this Aussie girl is really, really kind of giving me that vibe that she's really interested from the very first conversation we had. But she could just be um, maybe overly excited about the fact that we're from America and she apparently has a really high outlook on American, especially New York lifestyles. I'm glad I could help, Ozzy. Anyways, I'm gonna relax. I'll see you around, Falcon69. I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> My man. I watched Ozzy get up and leave the room, her hips gently swaying. My man! My first impression of Ozzy was that she was just a shallow party girl. What with the giant earrings, the style of her makeup, her clothes, and the way she held herself. But maybe I was wrong. Or maybe that wasn't everything there was to her. She seemed to be a genuinely nice person. Also, you had to admit, she was hot as hell. Ha 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 ha! He knows. He knows. 
She was completely out of my league, a girl like that usually went for more successful athletes or movie stars, but I wouldn't mind spending more time with her. After all, you never know. You know, that's actually kind of true, like I do believe that myself on occasion, that sometimes you see a girl that you think's out of your league. But here's the thing about this, here's the thing about this, take notes in case you want to. Sometimes, if you don't try, you don't even ever succeed. Of course, a lot of people are scared with the idea of trying and failing at something, you know, like whether it's just a job, you know, a goal in life, or maybe even like when it comes to dating. You see a girl, you're thinking, nah, there's no way. Or, you know, if you're a girl, it's a guy, or if you're a guy, it's a guy, whatever, hetero, gay, doesn't matter. But you're thinking to yourself, out of my league, right? Or whatever, out of my league. I can do it. But sometimes you'd be surprised how well you can do if you actually try it, because it's sometimes really about how well you hold yourself up, the personality. Confidence can get you through a lot of things, man. I'm not gonna lie to you about that. Sometimes I've been in that same situation where I'm thinking, no way. And you know what, I give it a try? Maybe under the guise of alcohol on occasion, because you need some, sometimes a little bit of liquid courage, so I could say. And you know what? Things have gone better than I expect. Just throwing it out there. Peggy, Danny, Angelo, and I were all eating lunch in the dining room when James looped through the doorway. Oh, here this guy comes again. You four, the front garden's a mess. Are you just gonna leave it like that? Pardon? I hadn't seen a garden anywhere around here. It took me a moment to fork out what he meant. The yard. That's not our responsibility, is it now? Yes, it is now. I want it clean by the night or I'm throwing you all out of your rooms. With that, he left. Yeah, fuck that guy, huh? He can't be serious. He's not serious, right? You all haven't been here as long as I have. This is my second year. I'm sad to say he's done much worse. So immediately after eating, we discarded our plans for the day and went to the front yard. Despite the fact that it was in the middle of winter, scraggly weeds were visibly growing over the flower beds and clumping up there and there in the grass. I stared at them, unsure of what to do. I didn't really have a yard back in New York. Danny Shrug got down on his knees and started pulling plants out of the ground. After a second, the other two went to different areas of the lawn and followed suit. I wasn't really confident enough to do it on my own. Who should I join? Alrighty, well we got another option here. Let me go with Peggy still because we've been kind of working towards her. I knelt next to Peggy, who was muttering under her bread faster than I could keep up. Creepy old tosser. Thinks he can just do whatever the bloody hell he wants, so up himself he'll get lost in there. I swear to God if I ever get my hands on him. Without meaning to, I burst into laughter. Peggy looked at me offended. Oi! What's the matter with you? Your accent, it just gets so thick when you're mad. It's just, it's hilarious. Peggy frowned at me. Not a thing I can do about that, is there? No, it's not a bad thing. It's not. I think it's kind of cute, actually. There you go. Ha ha ha! She's blushing now, boys. Peggy, Peggy flushed almost as red as her hair. What, what, what the hell is that? Oh, she's talking so fast that her words are going in together now. I mean, thank you, it's not like it's... I mean, I don't really know how to respond to that, you know, I'm just not something that people say, you know, and... <laughs> She's just completely... Yes! Falcon 69, you're in, dog! You got her really confused and nervous now. Deep breaths, Peggy. Breathe. Peggy stopped and took a breath. Right, well, uh, thank you. That was nice of you. You're welcome. I smiled at her, her eyes widened, then she turned her attention to the plants and raged yet again. Out! Out, damn plot! I passed by Mark in the hall. He was singing softly to himself in a language I didn't understand. I glanced at him questioningly and he laughed. T takoi sland slavni. Huh? He's talking in tongues now, everybody. But he just went into his room without explaining. Okay. Anybody watching and recognize that? Let me know. I have no idea what he just said or what language he was talking. That was definitely not French. What did he say? Who was Mark anyway? Well, I wasn't gonna get any answers today. Ugh, what a rough day. A glass was set down by my elbow. I looked to see a smiling Ashley. A white Russian on the house. Hey, baby, you know me too well. That's um, also, I like white Russians. It's also the the drink of the dude from the Big Lebowski. However, Falcon, is not, Falcon 69 doesn't drink if I'm right. Sweet. I keep forgetting I'm a lot of drink here. What's in this? Is it really alcoholic? Vodka, coffee, liquor, and cream. Just make sure you go slowly on it, okay? I don't know what your tolerance is. It's not crazy high. I usually only drink beer or wine that other people have brought to parties. Then drink one and see how you feel. You might be able to have another. <laughs> Those white Russians, man, they could creep up on you. Do not let the sweetness fool you. She glanced around and leaned in closer to me. But be careful. They're a bit pricey. Don't tell anyone I gave you this. 
you know, at some establishments, the staff aren't allowed to come to the bar at, at customers and all to make sure you don't get special treatment. Uh, should we be doing this? Oh, I'm sure it's fine. It's just this once, right? Right. What's somewhat as nice as actually behind the bar. I can see how it would be easy to take advantage. I took a straw from the basket of the bar surface and stuck it into the drink. Wow, this is delicious. You're damn right it is, Falcon. Uh-huh. Ashley walked away looking horrified for some reason. Well, what happened? The White Russian was cold and sweet and creamy. Essentially, it was candy. And I downed it in a few minutes. Oh, this guy's gonna get completely wrecked, man. I'm telling you right now. Hey, Ashley, can I get another? Oh, that's how it starts. That's how it starts. You're already done? Yeah, I am. I feel fine, so another one won't mess me up too bad. If you're sure. She went about preparing another, and as she did, I began to feel a little bit lightheaded. <laughs> guess I was feeling a bit more than I thought. Ashley put the drink in front of me and handed over, and I handed over a 10-pound note. Keep the change. Look at this guy winking at her. You get a little booze in somebody, and suddenly they're, they're Don Suave, you know? Geez, thank you. No problem. Now I have a question. I put the straw in the second cup and started drinking it, too. It tasted slightly different, though. Much sweeter. There was probably less alcohol in this one, which was probably for the best. She already knows that this guy's a lightweight. Still, it was enough to loosen my tongue. Or, actually, sometimes it's the opposite. You start stumbling on your words a bit. I want to know what happened with you and Brendan. Oh, son, you're asking the tough questions now, huh? Oh, God, I'm sorry. Is it really that bad? I, I totally shouldn't have asked. I'm super sorry. No, no, it's fine. I wasn't anything that bad. I mean, it was, well... I don't want to say what it was. Her eyes started around the bar, as if looking for some method of escape, but none presented them to her. Then again, there weren't many customers here at this time of day. I figured most people come around in the actual nighttime to drink, rather than getting drunk immediately after work like I was. Let's just say there was a time in my life when I worked retail where that was something that happened a lot, because... Oh, retail hell, my man, you don't understand? Retail hell. I mean, some of you, I'm pretty sure a lot of you understand, but... Sometimes that drink with a couple of co-workers after work gets you through the days. Wait, that was kind of sad, wasn't it? Wait, was it? Did I have to rethink my life now? Huh. Well, I'm not really sure what went wrong. It happened kind of suddenly, at least for me. One day everything seemed to be going great, and we were closer than ever we'd, we'd ever been before. And the next he dumped me. I'm certain he's not a bad person, though. Not deep down, anyways. I guess it just didn't work out at all, that's, that's all. She trailed off, staring intently into space. I sipped my drink carefully. I was nearly finished with this one, too. And I wanted to make sure I got all the deliciousness out of the cracks. This guy is just going through these things like candy, literally. After a few seconds, I realized she looked pretty upset. Hey, I'm sorry for bringing up bad memories. I was just curious, but I'm pretty sure it was a little shitty of me to ask. No, no, it's fine. Well, what do you think? Do you think people are inherently good? Uh... I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't think that's, a, that's true. I don't think everybody's just inherently good. I think there's honestly bad people out there. So, no. No? I mean, most people probably aren't trying to do bad things. It's probably like the butterfly effect or something. They're just trying to do something that makes them happy, and that makes other people suffer by accident. Or I guess some people purposely make other people suffer, but only because they're trying to get happy in some way. So really, most people aren't, like, super awful, but they still do shitty things sometimes. You know what? He actually sums it up pretty well. That's how I feel about it. Huh. Well, I never thought about it that way. I mean, haven't you accidentally said something mean when you were trying to be funny? All the time! <laughs> All the time! Here, let me get you some water. <laughs> yes, thank you. This guy needs a lot of water right now. She set the glass of water on the bar top and then another customer called her away. I drank my water in a peaceful kind of buzz and watched as Ashley carried out her shift. My reactions did feel a little slow, but hers seemed to be that way too. I didn't really understand it, but it seemed like something was on her mind. Eventually, I finished my drink and was ready to head back to my room. Ashley was such a nice girl. What really happened between her and Brendan? That's the age-old question right there. Alrighty, guys, we're gonna wrap it up here for this one. Hey, how you doing, Jiho? We're gonna wrap it up here for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. As I mentioned, this will be the last one I'm doing for now. And I will see how the second video on this one do. And if you guys are interested, want to see some more, you let me know. And we do the entire thing. I'm actually really having a blast with this. It's a lot different than what I'm used to recording, but... I just like reading stuff out to you guys and, you know, just engaging in conversation, even though I know it's not an actual conversation because you guys can't respond immediately. Maybe when I do some live streams down the line, it'll be a lot easier, but I like doing this. Just share my thoughts and let's see how you guys feel about it. By all means, whatever I'm talking about right now in these videos, respond in the comments. Respond to me. I read them all the time. I reply to them all the time. So 
There you guys have it. Um, if you like it, let me know and we shall do some more. I will catch you next time.